Hello, I'm now looking at Majamakaya number seven, Sutta number seven. Um, this is entitled Vatu Pama Sutta, the simile of the cloth. Um, it's not particularly long in the translation or the translated version, um, but, it, but it's got quite a lot of information in it, and it does seem to be split up into two distinct parts. So. Uh, the first part does deal with the simile of the cloth and um, in that one the, the Buddha talks about uh, you take a cloth that's dirty and you dye it, uh, it will be poorly dyed and um, so the same with a mind that's defiled will have an unhappy uh, destination and the destination refers to the the realms of the following rebirth um, I think I wrote down here um, the different realms so there's the um, uh, the lower realm which is the helm realm the hell realm the helm of the afflicted spirit and the animal realm. Whereas if the cloth was di um, was a clean cloth and was dipped in dye, it would pick up all the colours and would look good. And so similarly with the undefiled mind, a happy destination can be expected in the following rebirth, as or rebirth in the fortunate realm, which is the human realm, uh, the heavenly realm, the Brahma world, and the realm of formless existence. So that's that in a nutshell. And um, when we talk about defiled mind or the imperfections of the mind, uh, the Buddha then goes on to list what he deems to be the imperfections. And uh, there are 16 of them. Uh, which just quickly are listed as covetousness, ill will, anger, resentment, contempt, insolence, envy, avarice, deceit, fraud, obstinacy, rivalry, conceit, arrogance, vanity, and negligence. So those are the 16 corruptions or defilements as defined. And then uh, Buddha goes on to say well what happens when the defilements are overcome and uh, he says that, uh, with the um, overcoming of the defilements there arises an unwavering belief in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. So it's not sort of saying a belief in the Buddha, the Dharma and Sangha will lead to the quashing of defilements but vice versa that with the quashing defilements there will be a, a realisation of the of a belief or an unwavering belief in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. And with and following the this is, again, it steps through to the next uh, process in, in, the, in, in the thinking, is that with belief in the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha, uh, gladness arises, then rapture, then tranquility, then pleasure, then concentration and wisdom, which, which sounds a bit like sort of stepping through the jhanas. And the person's mind will become imbued with, um, mentions four um, things it becomes imbued with. So loving kindness, compassion, altruistic joy, which is mudita, the translation of mudita, equanimity, and without hostility and ill will. And then finally, <coughs> Upon liberation from the influence of sensual desire, 
being and ignorance, then there are no more rebirths. So that that's where, if you like, part one of the Sutta number seven ends, and it links in then to Buddha talking to a member of his audience, a person by the name of Sundarika Bharadvaja, uh, who asks Buddha a question in fact, so that's the sort of interruption. Who, now this, this, from what I understand this person is a Brahmin and in his belief system that people can just go to a sacred river and in bathing in this sacred river uh, will also achieve liberation. Uh, but Buddha responds, I think it's translated in verse, and part of the verse is, a fool may forever bathe, a fool may forever bathe, but not wash away his dark deeds. So basically Buddha rejects the idea uh, that was common at the time about bathing away one's sins um, and Buddha suggests that a person should take up the precepts it's not actually referred to as the precepts but um, the list that he mentions of things to take up brings to uh, be the same as the precepts uh, and if he takes up the precepts uh, Bharad Bhajya will not need to bathe and the ones he mentions or the ideas he mentions that Bharad Bhajya should take up is speak no falsehood, do no harm to living beings, do not take what is not offered and be free from greed. So just on that thing it says do no harm to living beings, I think in the precepts as I understand them it says do not kill but this do no harm. Um, tends to be more all-encompassing um, with relationship to our fellows. So, um, and with this, uh, Bharavaja uh, followed what Buddha had said and it says towards the end of the Sutta that in fact Bharavaja became an Arahant. And that's the end of Sutta number seven the Vatu Palma Sutta, the simile of the cloth. Thanks for watching.